Can y'all hear me okay? Yeah. Well, good morning. It's 10.30, or just about as close, I think, as I can get at this time. But welcome. It's great to see all of you here today in the house of the Lord. And I, yeah, and it is great to be here. Look, y'all, it's like I said the last time, not being able to come here to fellowship, um, it does something to us, doesn't it? Um, and so we need to be fed. And so this is a great opportunity that the Lord has given us. And I thank all of you for coming. I thank those of you who have cordoned off pews and uh, who have done the things that we need to do to try to keep everybody safe. And so we'll continue to pray that God will continue to watch over us and bless us and keep us safe as we continue to meet and worship Him. So um, we do have kind of a different service uh, this morning, a order of service that is. And so uh, we will have some singing, but uh, I don't have that on my worship order. Uh, and so we'll look at the screen and we'll uh, try to follow along as best we can and then we'll have something a little bit more organized uh, as we go on. So, again, welcome. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear most gracious Heavenly Father, Lord, we are so humble, Lord, and thankful, Lord, for this opportunity to be able to be in your house again to worship. And Lord, we just we give you praise and honor and glory for that, Lord. We just ask that, that everything we do here today would be pleasing in thy sight, Lord. As we lift up songs and praise, Lord, as we hear your word, Lord, I just pray that you would prick our hearts, Lord, and just help us to uh, consider the message, Lord, today uh, that we are going to hear. Lord, just help us to use it to be better Christians, or cr better Christians today or tomorrow than we were today. Lord, I just pray now that you continue to watch over us, each person here and the families that are represented, Lord, that you would watch over Riles Creek Church, Lord, as we start a new beginning, uh, glorifying your name. And we just ask now that you just continue to forgive us where we failed thee. And it's in your son's precious name we pray, in the powerful name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. So look, um, we've got some announcements. Do we have any on the screen that we need to mention? We do? Okay. And I don't know who got all this together, Miss Kelly. Would that be you? Yes, yeah, so if it's a little off, I'm sorry. <laughs> well, thank you for doing that. I think we need to give Miss Kelly a round of applause. <laughs> it's great to have that on the screen. So, no I, announcements? I think I put a song next and then announcements, but that's however you want to do it. Well, hey, I'm mean, flexible. <laughs> okay. So, I'll tell you what. Uh, we're going to sing a song. Uh, if you have your mask, please put that mask on. Just You can remain seated. We don't have to stand. Um, <laughs> And we will sing together, uh, as we have done at my school when we have a little birthday party. We will gather, but we'll have our mask on and we'll sing low. Okay. Um, so we have music that goes along with it. Yes, Brenda and Georgia are both here. My well, name is Georgia. Good to see you this morning. We're just saying this. She's already got it on the screen. We're just sitting there and we'll plan. And we'll plan something different for next week. Yeah, next week. Okay. So. Page 723, first, second, third verse, and we'll sing that. It says, please sing from your heart, not from your mouth, but if you want to sing with your mask on, please do so, okay? All right. <laughs>
so we do have some announcements this morning. Let me remove this thing. So we do have some announcements. Operation Christmas Child Work Day. That's coming up on Thursday the 17th at 9 o'clock in the Family Life Center. That's August the 17th, y'all. Hard to believe we're in August, Miss Kelly. Any other announcements that we have? Okay. Are there any other announcements out here in the congregation that we need to mention this morning? Well, I think I have one that we need to mention, and that is we are no longer affiliated with a United Methodist Conference, right? I think that deserves a round of applause. <laughs> so now we are officially Riles Creek Church. We are independent, and so we can have our service when we feel that we can have our service, or not, however we can so decide, right? Uh, so that's a great thing. I would just, uh, of course, encourage all of you to continue to support our church. And so we won't have an offering plate passed today, but we do have an offering plate out there in the foyer. And you can drop that offering there to help support the church and keep these lights going in this nice air condition and so forth. Okay. Also, um, if you haven't made a pledge uh, toward um, the disaffiliation process, there is a cost, a financial cost. And we need to make sure that we fulfill that obligation. And so uh, does anybody want to remind us of that and what that process is going to be like now? Today, <laughs> you don't want to put you on the spot, but. Um, well, the bank note was signed Thursday, right? Monday, I don't know, Thursday. And um, we are committed. They set us up. I, I feel like the bank was very good and generous to us. They let us set up a 15-year note, but guaranteed us uh, locked-in 4% interest for five years. So, and our goal is to be able to pay this loan off within five years. So, it's set up on an annual payment, but our plan is anytime we have extra money, we have an extra thousand dollars or an extra five thousand dollars we're going to apply it to the note so that that will be less interest that we will have to pay so is that basically what you want it is, and, then, huh? and then as far as the pledge cards there are several people filled one out last time we were here and some are due in, in september and some are due in december and those will be good times that we can go and apply some more toward that thing. Thank you all. What is the amount? Uh, we borrowed eighty thousand dollars, but we paid one hundred seventeen. So that just shows that we stepped up. Our church stepped up. Our people stepped up, and we did not have to borrow everything, even though we were struggling to borrow that. Right. And so I'm pretty sure I'll think it's going to be at the end of the year, like seventy five. The balloon note at the end of the year. Yeah, that is what you got to have by the end of the year. Yeah. Or at the end of the year. And so that's where those pledge cards come in handy. So, you know, we can, you know, if whatever pledges we get at these different times, go ahead and apply that for that $7,500 a year. And then if we have extra at the end of the year, hey, that's even better. Okay. There is a spot on that card where it says other. So if you want to put a different date, okay. So if you want to let this accumulate throughout the course of the year, save you money, and then donate it. June the 30th. I don't right. know when that balloon note would be due, but uh, you could you could do that too. Yeah. So, so any questions about that? Thank you, Mr. Neal, for sharing. Uh, yes, sir. There's some people in this church that need to be thank you. Yes. Uh, I can't call all of them names. Uh, I know John was involved, but, but there are a few ladies in this church that I don't know that we got that this we got done without. I agree. So let's give them all a round of applause. And we do thank you all. We, look, we've got some great leaders in our church, and y'all stepped up and kept this thing moving forward. And I'll be honest, I thought we were about to have to go backwards. You know, Miss Frieda and I had that conversation. But, you know, she was determined. I know Miss Tanini was and the rest of you all who were on this organizational board for this. And so I thank you for making sure that it continued to move in the right direction. 
Yes, ma'am. I'm sorry. Go ahead, Ms. Fine. But I was just going to say one more, th one more thing that this is just beginning. Like, now we've got to basically start over. You know, right. We've got to come up with new committees. We've got to find a preacher. I mean, we've got a great person that's going to fill in for us. But, but I'm not a preacher, y'all. I'm a school administrator. I don't think he's willing to do it full time. Well, I can't. I can't. And so you're right. Thank you for bringing that up, Mr. Nee. And so at some point in time, we're going to have to get a search committee together. There's a lot of things that we still have to find. To find a preacher. So there's still a lot of work. Now, so, now, so, now the one for search committee. Yes, okay, so right, thank you, Ms. Fraser. So next Sunday is going to be our official membership drive Sunday. So those of us here who haven't officially moved our membership from Riles Creek United Methodist Church, uh, we need to make sure that we do that next Sunday. So if you're here, great, and I have this up here to let everybody know. If you're not able to be here, then we have a letter here that you just need to basically fill out and sign that you want to have your letter of membership moved from Riles Creek United Methodist Church to Riles Creek Church. Did I, did I say that correct? Yes, but also Barbara told me that she wants that filled out even if you are here because she will take the information off there to add it to her record book. Okay, okay. So even if you are here, fill this out. And I'm not sure what next Sunday is going to look like. Brother David and I are going to talk. Um, I'm going to call him this afternoon um, and just kind of see what he thinks on this thing. Uh, he and I both, are, you know, this is not my area of expertise. And y'all know that. It is his. But he also doesn't want to step on anybody's toes because this isn't his pulpit. Right? And he's done with his contract to the United Methodist Church. So... But he did say that he would be willing to come back and help us with that membership meeting, as last I recall. So we're going to talk today, this afternoon. I'll give him a call. And, and Ms. Frieda, I'll let you know what I find out, since you're still the PPR ch chairperson. I'm not. Well, <laughs> right, I, I know. You still got the hat, Ms. Frieda. I'm sorry to tell you. Steve, you're still the, the trustee's chair. I'm, I'm sorry. Well, okay. let's just say this. And I've been the lay leader here for, I can't tell you how long, but I'm willing to serve. And, and if we can all have that mindset, it doesn't matter if you feel like that's your strong suit. Uh, but if God pricks your heart and says, hey, I want you to do that, just be willing to step up and answer the call. You know, um, I prayed about doing this because I have to tell you, at first I was thinking, I don't know that I can do that. But I had to go to God and pray about this. And I felt like after praying, and him pricking my heart, he said, Bo, you need to do this. And so I encourage all of you to answer that call if he calls you to do that. Okay? Now, yeah, it, it gets uncomfortable from time to time. So, but just be willing to step up for God. It's not about doing it for man. It's doing it for God. So, all right. So any questions about the membership drive Sunday, next Sunday? If you're not going to be able to be here, pick one of these up if you already know it and bring it, you know, when you're able to come back or does it have a place to mail it if we need to mail it in? There's blank forms in the back. Right, there are blank forms in the back, but I don't see an address on where to um, mail this. Okay. And even if you're going to be here next week, you can go and pick one up and have it filled out. That's right. Out. And even if you're going to be here next week, get one, fill it out, and bring it back. Now, every member... Uh, of your family who's a member of the church needs to have a separate one, correct? So you can't just put all the household on there. You have to have a separate one for every member of your household. It's something Judge Scott drives. It is. That's the key. They haven't received it to the church. Yes, 185 Rouse Creek Road, y'all. That's, that's our church. 
address. Thank you. Mendenhall. Okay. Yes, yes. So thank you. All right. A lot went into this process, and so there's a lot of people, and we don't want to leave anybody out. So anybody who was involved in this whole thing, thank you so much for making it happen, uh, because it wouldn't happen without you. So uh, hopefully we'll see some growth, and as we get into this thing, and we start to uh, begin this new chapter of Riles Creek Church, we'll begin a mission of going out and reaching out to our community and bringing those people back into our church who maybe have, uh, you know, kind of lost their way, uh, or because of, you know, stance that the, the conference that we were in had decided they didn't want to be a part of this church anymore. So, uh, and remember, we're a loving church. And we always have been. From the time I've come here, it's, it's been nothing but hugs and, you know, you just get loved on every time you walk in the doors. Okay? And so, we need to continue that. So, any other announcements? I will say this, and then we'll move on. Today, when we do dismiss, uh, we're going to ask that we dismiss in an orderly fashion. So the pews in the back would dismiss first. And I'm going to try to remember to tell you all that again. But I just want to go ahead and touch base on that. And then as those members move on out the door, and let's not congregate in the door, then the next row, the next pew. So, because I know if I don't say it now, I'm going to forget. And we're just all going to be a, a big, big wad going out the door. So, all right. Any other announcements this morning? Okay, what do we have next? Pray song. We are the church. Let's put our mask back on, if you would please, if we're going to sing.
if you didn't know that song, but it has a good message. Yes. Okay. So now we've come to that part of our service where we have our prayers and our praises and our concerns. And then when we do that, we'll have our little birthday and anniversary recognitions and celebrations. So, uh, Brother Steve, do we have a list of prayers? I didn't have it this morning. Did they use that one? Okay, well, they has got it. Okay. Okay. Brother Sam is going this week for chemo injections, correct? That's what I heard? Okay. So let's, let's remember to lift up Brother Sammy as well. Of course, there was a young person, I say young person, he's my age, from New Hebron, um, who passed away this past week. I believe his name was Jason Riley. He, he had COVID, and so we just need to remember that family as well. And y'all may know others uh, who have passed or who are, who are ill. And so we may have some unspoken that uh, we want to mention as well. So, um, any praises this morning? I'm sorry, Bob. transition phase uh, as we uh, work toward doing your mission, Lord, and that is to make disciples uh, out in this world that we live in. So we just pray that you continue to watch over us as we do those things that you call us to do. Lord, and protect us, Lord, from this, uh, this disease, Lord, that's afflicting so many people in our community. Lord, we pray now that you would be with our country. Lord, we are going through so much change and there's so much turmoil uh, around us, Lord. We just pray, Lord, that... Uh, that you would help our leaders uh, to make good decisions that would help the people that they serve, Lord, because you did allow them to be placed in a position of servanthood. And so we pray that you would help them to understand what that 
um, that position of servant and leader actually is, that they would make the right decisions for us all uh, in this great nation that we live in. Lord, those who are disgruntled, Lord, those who are causing division among us, Lord, we just pray that you would just squelch them, Lord, and push them back, uh, Lord, that you just bind them and keep them uh, from doing Satan's work, because that's what it is, Lord. We, we pray that you would just bind those demons, uh, Lord, and just keep them away from, from each one of us. We ask now that you just continue to watch over our church, that you'd guide us as a family of Christ, and that you would help us to do your will. And we pray now that you would be with us as we pray that prayer that you taught your disciples to pray so many years ago. We'll recite that to you now. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. And give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. All right, so we have some birthdays and some anniversary celebrations. What do we have? 72. 72. Yeah, we have birthdays yesterday. Okay, I, I, I thought you were about to say that, he, that you had to put up with him for 72 years, but he's 72 years old. He's 72 years old. Okay. So, so Brother John Daly had a birthday yesterday. Well, that's August. August birthday. Happy birthday. All right, do we have any other August birthdays that we need to mention? Miss Sandra? Mine's this month. I'll be 23. And you'll be 23 again, right? <laughs> there you go. Marshall said if we got an anniversary, she'll be managing. Right, so we have it. Oh, thank you, Sammy. Okay, well, hey, at least he was honest that you had to remind him, right, Miss Jordan? Yeah. Yeah. And so how many years? How many years? 38. 38. You've been putting up with him that long? Wow. Bless your heart. Mom, 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 so, so August the 16th, y'all will have been married for 45 years. Wow. <laughs> no, you're not. I still remember when you were teaching. You still look the same as pretty as you did when you were teaching. So, well, and John Edward Report was 50 yesterday. That's right, because, yeah, I saw that in the newspaper. 1970, they were married. Wow. We get and so, Vince and Faye have 48 this week. Look, you all are definitely setting the bar. Okay, so. And I've got a birthday, August 10th. August 10th birthday. Brother Aubrey? Yeah. Friday's Kim's birthday. Friday's of this week is Miss Kim's. She's looking at you like, why did you have to go there? <laughs> I'm not going to ask you how old, Miss Kim. Okay. 25. There you go. All right. Um, now Derek has a birthday on August the 16th. Do we have any other birthdays that we need to mention? Well, it was in July. That's right. That's right. So that was back, actually, it was June, wasn't it? June the 29th. Yeah, it was June. Yeah. <laughs> Praises, you didn't tell us that you're going to be a grandfather. Oh, I, look, I forgot. <laughs> How can I forget something like that? That is a praise. <laughs> yes, yeah, so yeah, on Father's Day, actually, um, Derek and Haley came to give me my Father's Day gift, y'all, and they brought a little brown bag with a little onesie in it, and y'all may have seen that on Facebook when I posted it. So, don't know if it's going to be a boy or a girl or something like that, or a girl, I can't remember what it says. He or she is what it says. Don't know if it's a he or she, but you're a grandpa to be. So, yeah, that is a praise. So thank you. Thank you for bringing that up, Miss D. We're looking forward to that. Uh, Mom and Dad have an anniversary on the 8th. All right. Coming up real quick. How many years? 34. 34 years. That's great. And Virginia has our birthday on the 29th. Okay. August 29th. <laughs> so Miss Virginia will have a birthday. Any others? Okay. So we can do this like we do in my school. Put that mask on and sing low. If you want to sing in your heart, that's fine too. We're gonna to sing a little happy birthday here to everybody who's having a birthday. Okay. Ready? Mm. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday to you. Happy birthday, God bless you. Happy birthday to you and many more. All right. And again, happy anniversary to everybody who is, who's having an anniversary. Okay. Where are we at, Miss Kelly? Now's the time. 
now's the time. Yes, ma'am. There were 10 other churches besides us. People might not know that yet. But Thank you for sharing I think that. Really, God has moved in the United Methodist. And there are more to come. Yeah. And look, y'all, there are churches, and I know of one over in Beauregard that's looking at us just to see what, what we're going to be doing. Uh, and I've been keeping my dad updated on that because that's his church. And so they've been discussing it. But, you know, they're just like us, they don't have $80,000. You know, but they do have some people in the church who are wanting to move forward with this. So this might give them um, that little push to go ahead and, and do it. So we'll see. Well, some some are trying to wait and see what's going to happen. But I think we've done that enough. And so and that's why we've moved Lee forward. Lee Maddox from the bank, the law officer that we dealt with, called me and told me that after we finished, A, he didn't tell me which one, another United Methodist Church called him wanting to know how it went and how it all worked out because they were seriously considered. In our, in our county, maybe? So, yeah. Well, I do know that there are other churches in our county that are looking at us to see. Right. You know. I think it was good for it, but sure it might be done. Yeah, I it agree. Can't be done. I agree. You know, and, and even when we thought, hey, things were going backwards, and like I said, I was one of those. Y'all stepped up, and we appreciate you doing that. And several people have told us how proud they are of what we're doing. Yeah. Not people in the church, but outside. Yeah. So thank you all for keeping the faith and keeping this thing moving in the right direction because it wouldn't have happened without you. So this morning, we're going to kind of talk a little bit about that. You know, I, I get things in my mind from time to time, and uh, I think about, you know, we're, we're doing something great for the Lord, now, what are we going to do with the church? Now, this is the church building where we all come to worship, right? But we are the church. And so today, let's think about how we're going to begin to change ourselves so that we can move this church forward and do God's will. And, and that is to make disciples. Go and make disciples. And so this morning, our, uh, if you would, go ahead and take your Bibles out, your game plan. Y'all remember that? God's game plan right there, okay? Now, I'm an old football coach. I had to have a game plan before every game so I would know how to be prepared. That's your game plan. So I encourage you to bring your Bible every Sunday, okay? And we might start doing like Brother Bill Parks used to do. We won't hold up the game plan, all right? But if you would this morning, turn in your Bibles. We're going to look at two um, books of the Bible, short passages, but turn to Psalms 51, 10 through 12. Mark that page, Psalms 51, 10 through 12. And then when you find that, say amen. And then turn to Matthew chapter 12, verse 43 and 40, through 45. Again, Matthew 12, 43 through 45. We're going to look at those two scriptures this morning. And when you get that, say amen. And again, I want you to have your game plan with you because you need to see the word for yourself. Don't, don't believe Bo Huffman. You know, believe the Bible. That's God's holy and infallible word. And this is where it's my, this message that God, I believe, has been laying on my heart for the last two weeks, y'all, um, has come from. Y'all know I've been driving that summer school bus for Mendenhall. And every morning before I'd go get on that bus, I'd have a little scripture, a little, little um, um, devotional. And that Psalms 51, 10 through 12 began to speak to me. And I started thinking, Lord, is that what you want me to share with the church the next time I have to preach? And he kept working on me. And so I kept reading that scripture every day, reading that scripture every day. And it's just been on my heart. You know? And so today, as we uh, look at those scriptures, um, I want us to think about what it means to have a clean heart. Um, a clean heart. You know, 
we started a new chapter in Riles Creek, Riles Creek Church. And what, what, what do we typically do when we, um, when we try to get a house ready uh, for the guests to come? Or maybe if we're trying to sell a home, we're trying to get it ready so that when it changes hands, they get the home, it's in good condition. What do we try to do? We try to clean it up, don't we? And so now's the perfect time for us to start thinking about cleaning up the church because we are the church. So as we begin this chapter, this new chapter as Riles Creek Church, we need to be sure that we start to tidy things up. This scripture's talking to me, y'all. I hope that you all uh, can feel that message in your heart this morning, too. It's time to, to do a little cleaning up, a little cleaning out, kind of a clean sweep, so to speak, and to create that environment where people want to come back to Riles Creek. To create that, create that environment where they feel loved, where they feel cared for. Because look, we've got some people that are still not back with us, right? And they're concerned. We need to love on them. We need to love on them and let them know, hey, we're still here for you. We care for you. We want you back in the, in the church with us. And you may not feel comfortable right now being here. But look, we're here for you. And we don't think any less of you. We don't think any hard feelings towards you. If you don't feel comfortable coming, that's fine. You know, I, I get this, and I share this with you often. I get this Christian email every day. It's like Andrew's sermon quotes or something like that. I can't remember the heading of it. But it talked about getting back into church in the midst of COVID. And so we have some people in our midst or who are not in our midst who feel like they're just not ready. They're not comfortable to come back yet. And so we need to love on them and let them know that's okay. That's okay. When you get ready, we're going to greet you and love on you with open arms. And I think that's important right now because we don't want them to disaffiliate from Riles Creek Church. Right? And so be mindful of that as we go through this. Now yesterday, uh, I had an opportunity, and I would strongly encourage you to do this if you haven't done it, to, to attend a concealed carry class. Scott and Sharon Womack put this thing on, and yeah, I was a little apprehensive about going at first because, look, I don't shoot pistols all the time, and I didn't want to look like, a, you know, I couldn't hit that target, but I did okay, but it was a great beginner's class, okay? But look, here's the thing, this is what I'm trying to get at. While I was gone at that, my pretty little wife cleaned up the house, and I came back, and it just made me feel good to walk into a clean house. Doesn't that make you feel good when that happens? When you all get your home ready for someone to come and visit, and you know, hey, they're gonna come into my house and it's gonna look pristine, it's gonna look clean. When they walk into that bathroom, they're not gonna have to wonder if it's clean. It's gonna smell and it's gonna look clean. You know, when they come in, they look at the floors, they know that it's been swept and vacuumed. And doesn't that make us feel good? What, how does it make you feel whenever you clean your car? Now, my, my old truck out there has not been washed in a while. Last time I washed it, I think was spring break. But every time I wash that old truck, even though it's running off of seven cylinders right now, really, my, my little hoopty out there, it's not running real well. But when I wash that truck, it makes it feel like it's got a little extra oomph, right? A little extra power, okay? Maybe that's just the good feeling that I have in my heart. You know, I'm talking to that little old gray mare out there, and I say, come on, baby, come on, you know? And as it shifts gears, I have to let off that accelerator so it doesn't slam into second gear. But it makes you feel like it's just a little bit better, right? And that's what having a clean heart can do for us as well. Now, I got a little analogy that I'm going to share with you. And I can't remember the old motivational speaker that did this one year when I was at an FCA weekend of champions for kids. But he walked around and he had a much bigger bag than this garbage bag, okay? And he started talking about all the sin that's in our lives and what we need to, to do with that as we clean up our hearts. And this guy was a great motivational speaker. But you know, we all have some sins in our hearts, right? We have things like, what's that? Lust. And whether you're lusting after some man's wife or some 
woman's husband or whether you're lusting after their belongings and the things that they have and you want what they've got, that's still a sin, right? Where do we need to put it? In the trash can, okay? What's this? Profanity, and I have to tell you, I have a problem with that sometimes, and so we need to clean our mouths, our potty mouths up, right? My wife, is she seeing this right now? She's saying amen. What's this? Hate. We have a lot of hate in our world right now. Let's not become part of that. We need to be showing our brothers and sisters love. But look, y'all, and this comes from the book, The Art of War. Keep your friends close. Keep your enemies closer. Okay? And we can pray for them, and we can love them, even though they're doing something that we know is wrong. We still love them. Right? Now, we don't have to agree with what they're doing, but we still love them. Here's one. Racism. It's a sin. We don't have to like people, but when we mistreat them because of the difference in their skin or their culture or the difference in maybe their belief, you know, just like the difference in some of our opinions about whether we need to come back to church or not right now. Okay? All of that, the prejudice that goes along with it and the mistreatment, that needs to end. Okay? That's a sin. We need to throw it in the garbage and get it out of our hearts. What's this one? Adultery. Okay? And whether you thought the deed or you actually did it, it's a sin. We need to put it in the trash. Get it out of our heart. Here's one that I don't think anybody in here has done. Okay? That was pretty serious, although the other ones are as well, because a sin is a sin, right? That sin's no more worse than adultery, no more worse than racism, no more worse than hate, okay, or lust, or any of the other ones. It's a sin, it's a sin, it's a sin. We need to get rid of it, put it in our hearts. And God can forgive someone who actually commits that, right? We're going to see that here in just a few minutes. Disobedience. Thank you, Ms. Frieda, for bringing that up a while ago. Because when God calls us to do something and we don't, y'all, that's disobedience. And it doesn't matter how young or old you are, how comfortable or confident you feel in what you're doing, if we refuse to do what God has called us to do, it's a sin. Okay? Let's get rid of that sin. Clean our hearts up. Lying. Now that seems real simple. Are there white lies? Are they little white lies? No. All lies are lies, right? Whether we lie to ourselves or lie to somebody else or lie to God, it's a sin. Let's clean our hearts up and get rid of it. Okay? Stealing! Okay? Some of y'all may have some stuff at the house that mm, maybe wasn't yours. Start with and just wind up at your house. It happens, y'all. That would be considered stealing. You may not have had the intent of having it there, but it wound up there and it's still there. Maybe you borrowed a farm implement from somebody. Didn't return it. Okay? Here's one. Let's clean up our heart. So what if we do against God is blasphemy, right? Whether we say his name in vain. Okay? Whether we do something that would not be in keeping with his principles. That would be considered blasphemy. Let's clean up our hearts. Here's another one. Jealousy. Okay? Jealous of somebody forgetting ahead, doing good in their lives. Jealous of somebody because, hey, they were able to have a baby and I wasn't. I mean, that, that happens, y'all. Y'all think about that. Okay? Let's clean up our hearts. Coveting. Wanting what's not yours and somebody else's. Okay? Brother Sammy has a beautiful black Monte Carlo restore. You know, I, Brother Sammy, I have to tell you, I, I covet your vehicle. I love that old car. Okay? So, but anyway, I need to clean that out of my heart. Okay? Here's one. How many of us have done this even today? You think about it. Gossip. Is that any worse than any of the other ones that we've talked about? In our natural mind, we may think it is. But spiritually, it's not. Right? The sin is a sin is a sin. And here's one. Haughtiness. Thinking you're better than somebody else. I mean, really. But isn't that something that's a problem? You know? And look, there are all kinds of sins. I could have had a whole 
You know, I probably could have filled up two garbage bags or more. But what do we need to do with these sins? God says, go to the cross, give them to Jesus. And I'm going to hang up here, not for blasphemy, because Jesus hung on this cross. He carried our sins right here, didn't he? And I'll take this down later, Miss Brady. Okay. So there's our sins right there. Seems like we had a preacher one time before we had a box down here, a garbage can. We all got a piece of paper and we wrote down what our sins were. And we came up here and we put them in that garbage can. Y'all remember doing something like that? So, we all have sins in our, in our lives. And, and I'm not saying let's have true confessions. You may have a, a moment where you feel the need to come to this altar and lay them right there before the Lord just to get on your knees and ask him to forgive you, to clean up your heart. Today, when we look at the scripture, we're going to see how David did that. And look, there's, this is going to get kind of lengthy. I'm not going to keep you here longer than the first verse that we talk about in this particular uh, first scripture that we read. Because it, it, I think I can get two or three sermons out of this, Brother Rusty. So, we're going to first read scripture from Psalms 51, 10 through 12. And there's actually uh, basically four points that we're going to mention in this. But we're going to talk about the first point, a clean heart, this morning. So if you would turn to that first scripture, Psalms 51, 10 through 12. And it says this, Create in me a pure heart, O God, and renew a steadfast spirit within me. Do not cast me from your presence or take your Holy Spirit from me. Restore to me the joy of your salvation and grant me or sustain me with a willing spirit. May God bless the reading and the hearing of his uh, holy and his infallible word this morning. This is the word of God, y'all, for the people of God. Praise be to God. Now, I ask this morning that God, um, y'all would go with us and pray. We're going to ask God to bless this word. And so let us pray. Dear Heavenly Father, oh, that you would bless me indeed, Lord, and that you would just um, enlarge my territory. Lord, that you would create in me a clean heart this morning as your messenger, Lord, and that you would hide me behind your cross, Lord, and just use me as your messenger to share this simple message today. I pray this in your son's precious name. Amen. Now, let's talk about what I just prayed. You know, in the past, I've, I've shared with you about the prayer of Jabez. And in the prayer of Jabez, there were a couple of words at the beginning of that prayer that really stand out to mean something. And the first word was bless. Oh, that you would bless me. The second word was indeed. And if you look at those two words, and it has relevance to what David prayed in his prayer in Psalms, if you look at those two words, to bless means to instill joy. To instill joy within me. Indeed means abundantly. So at the very beginning of Jabez's prayer, in Chronicles, by the way, that's where that prayer is. Second Chronicles, I believe. But in the very first sentence of Jabez's prayer, Oh, that you would bless me indeed. Oh, that you would instill joy in me abundantly. And that's what he was talking about in that prayer. And so I asked that of God this morning that he would fill me with joy, that he would fill me abundantly, but also that he would clean up my heart. Because I believe that I need to pray for me before I can pray for y'all. Someone once told me that if you have a problem with someone, pray for the man in the circle first, and then pray for that other person. Clean up your heart first, and then let's work on helping everyone else. So. Let's dig a little bit deeper into David's prayer. Now, King David, at this particular time, when he wrote this prayer, it was actually uh, written in the form of a song or a sonnet, as many of the songs were uh, during this particular time. And this particular prayer was written at a season in David's life where he was having some problems with sin. Now, David wasn't a perfect man. He had problems with sin just as you and I do. And in this particular time, David had committed three very 
serious, heinous acts. In fact, so serious that if they were done in today's time, he would no longer be a king. He'd probably be executed. But these were the three that he did. He committed adultery. He committed murder. And he lied to cover it all up. Now the story goes like this. Y'all probably remember the story about King David. And he lusted after another man's wife. Y'all remember that? And it happened to be one of his fiercest generals in his army. And the wife's name was Bathsheba. And he saw Bathsheba from his palace or wherever he was taking a bath in the river. And yes, you know, you take a bath, you take your clothes off. And so she's down there and instead of turning his head, you know, trying not to see, he starts to gawk. He begins to lust in his heart. And eventually it turns into an adulterous affair. Well, Bathsheba becomes pregnant. And so he realizes, hey, if the people find out, what, hey, they're not going to be very happy. They're probably going to, you know, put me out of office. I won't be king anymore. So he started getting worried about that. So his plot at this point to try to lie and cover up begins. And so he sends for Bathsheba's husband, which was one of his most fiercest generals. Remember that now. And his name was General Uriah, or Uriah. And he calls for him to come back to Israel while the rest of his men are still fighting, by the way. And he calls him back because he wants him to basically lay, lay with his wife so that no one will realize that, hey, I've done this, this terrible act of adultery and now this baby's about to be mine. But because General Uriah would not leave his men and go back and spend time with his family while his men were still out here fighting, he doesn't lay with his wife. He camps out, basically, with other soldiers there at the king's palace. Now, King David tries to coax him and encourage him to go spend time with his wife, but he won't do it. And so eventually, he sends him back to the front lines with a message to whoever was in charge at that particular time to put him into front lines in the fiercest battle that you may be faced with, and then everyone back up without providing him with any support. Now, can you all imagine someone going into battle, trusting your brothers in arms, that they're going to be there to have your back, and then all of a sudden you're out there stranded alone, and you've got all these enemy combatants in your face trying to kill you, and then everyone else retreats, and you're still stuck out there. And no one comes back to save you or to help you. That's what King, uh, General Uriah was having to deal with. And because of that, the plan was for him to die, and that's what happened. And so now, you've got <coughs> King David. He committed adultery. He lied to create a plot to have his fiercest general killed because he committed adultery, and it was the wife of that general who he committed adultery with. And then he committed murder. Now, whether you want to call it direct murder, or I'm not sure what the term on that would be, uh, Brother Vince, uh, first degree murder, second degree, whatever it would be, but or murder for hire. But still, as I was looking up what the um, penalty would be for that, if you hire someone to go murder somebody, you can be charged and have the same uh, penalty as someone who actually commits, what is it, first degree murder, which is the most serious first degree. So you can wind up even in jail for life or, or executed for both of those, you know? So he commits these three serious sins in this process. Now, before King David was king, y'all may remember this. He was called a man after God's own heart. And this actually occurred twice in the Bible, by the way. The first time was in 1 Samuel when Samuel, who anointed uh, David to be king, was rebuking King Saul at the time for not following God's commands. And that came from 1 Samuel 13, 14, where he said, But now your kingdom shall not continue. The Lord has brought or has sought for himself a man after his own heart. And at that time, he was talking about David. So he was putting King Saul to the side, and his man, after his own heart, was now going to be the king of his people, the king of Israel. Now, 
is referenced again in the book of Acts in 13.22 when Paul begins to reference history. And he says, after removing Saul, he made King David, or David, king over Israel, and he testified, I have found David, son of Jesse, a man after my own heart. So does it mean that if you're a man or a woman, after God's own heart, that you have to be perfect? Hmm. Well, we know that David had a checkered past, don't we? I mean, we just talked about those three heinous acts that he committed. He committed adultery, he, he lied, and he committed murder. And so I'll ask you again, does it mean that a man has to be perfect to be a man after God's own heart? And I think that's where the point is this morning in this message. Because there's not a single one of us in here today that's perfect. I sinned before I left the house to come over here this morning. Some of y'all may have too. Some of you are going to sin before the day is out. Does it mean that we can't still be a person after God's own heart? It doesn't. And David is our example of that. And instead of condemning David, what did God do? He forgave him. Just like he does for you and me. That doesn't mean we should continue to, to do those old things. Although we do fall back into that rut sometimes. And we do those old things that we know is wrong. Like saying an ugly word when we mash our finger. Or doing something stupid. You know, and, and uh, uh, having a thought that we shouldn't have. I mean, you think about it. We still do those things, but we shouldn't. But here's the thing. Let's take a look back at David's prayer. In his prayer, he asked God to do four things. And these are the four points. We'll talk about one this morning, and that's the clean heart. He said these four things. <clears throat> he said, create in me a clean heart. He said, renew a steadfast spirit within me. He said, restore the joy of your salvation. And he says, sustain in me. A willing heart and in each verse there's an action verb and then there's a specific thing that David desires now let's look at the first verse a little more closely create create is that action verb y'all okay if Miss Barbara was here she could tell me all about that the English teacher that she was Miss Kelly you could probably enlighten me on some of that too but create well what does create mean it means to bring into existence it means to call something to happen or to produce something. Okay? So let's look at the second part of that. The specific thing that David was asking for. A clean heart. What does that mean? It means a heart without malice. That means a heart without any of these sins that we talked about earlier. That means a heart without treachery or evil. You know, there's a lot of evil in our world right now. Wouldn't it be great... If we could witness to some of those people who are lost, those people that are Antifa or whatever organization they're with, and they're destroying the communities that they live in, wouldn't it be great if we could witness to them and say, look, it doesn't have to be that way. Unfortunately, I'm afraid the demons have their heart so tied up that they wouldn't hear it. But should that stop us? It should and I'm afraid, look, it's going to come to a point where it's not just going to be out there in other places. It's going to be right here. And I hope it never gets to that point. But I'm afraid that's the direction that it's heading. Who knows what's going to happen on November 4th? Y'all think about that. You know, I think we should all be prepared. But I think right now is when we should be getting on our knees and praying that God would have his hand in this whole thing. That he would protect his people. That he would help us to make disciples and witness to those people who don't know him. Look, there's a, there's a group of unchurched people across this world. If you go to my school today and you ask the kids, how many of y'all attend church regularly? I would venture to say that 50 to 60 percent don't. Miss Kelly, we have a mission field, don't we? And it's sad. And here's the thing. The government tries to bind our hands so that we can't tell our kids about Jesus. But we can find ways around it. Okay? If it's student-led, it can be done. 
And so, let's not forget that that's part of our mission, to reach out, to go and make disciples, to clean up our hearts so that we can do that. Okay? Now, while preparing this sermon, and we're going to finish up here in just a minute, I thought about this particular parable of the empty house, and that came from Matthew 12, 43 through 45. And so if you'd like to turn your Bible to that particular scripture, just so you know, it's not me saying it. This is the Word of God. So again, Matthew 12, verses 43 through 45. And in my Bible, these are red letters, which means Jesus said it. And it says, when an evil spirit comes out of a man, it goes through arid places, seeking rest and does not find it. Then it says, I will return to the house I left. When it arrives, it finds the house unoccupied, swept clean, and put in order. Then it goes and takes with it seven other spirits, more wicked than itself. And they go in and live there. And the final condition of that man is worse than the first. And that is how it will be with the wicked generation. So as I was looking at that particular scripture, I came across this story about a husband and his wife. A very well-to-do couple. And they were living in this huge home and, you know, they got tired of having to clean up the house and they didn't want to sell the house and figured they'd just keep it. But they had a big yacht sitting on the river out there and so they figured they'd just go live on the yacht, be a little easier to maintain. And so they never went back to the home. And in the process, you know, the home being beautiful with marble floors and granite countertops and you name it, I mean, stainless steel appliances, uh, I think a gold bidet for the toilet. I mean, look, this was a well-to-do family. Y'all don't know what a bidet is, kids. That's a different kind of toilet <laughs> that the French created. Y'all can look that up. But anyway, um, they left this house. The landscape was beautifully manicured. They left this house, and they left it to its demise because what happened over time this house be began to get run down no one was there to fix the cracks in the floor so the marble began to crack as the house began to settle no one was there to maintain the appliances so you know they quit working you know no one was there to take care of the landscape yard and so it grew up and trees all in the flower beds and these people are living it up on their big boat eventually because of the location of this home, you started having people come into the home because it wasn't lived in. So they'd break in, they'd live there, you'd have crack addicts, you'd have prostitutes, you'd have vagrants off the street because they didn't have anywhere to live, that's where they went. Y'all think about that particular story and the parable of the empty house that Jesus provided for us. Y'all, that's what happens to our heart. If we clean it up and we get it all pristine, pristine condition and it looks really good and then we let that sin creep back in and we don't follow God and we say, you know, God, I know that was wrong. And we just let it continue to build back up. He doesn't say just that one demon comes in. It's all seven of those demons. Seven more demons come back into your heart. Makes it even worse. Makes it a more filthy place. Filthier than it was before. If we allow it to happen. And see, that's where David was. He was in a season of sin in his life. But he never lost sight of what God could do for him. That's why David was a man after God's own heart. Because even though he sinned, and it was terrible sin, y'all. He still knew where to go. To get his heart clean. He still listened to God's command. And I think that's where sometimes we fall short. We let old Satan get into our lives. And we let old Satan kind of direct us and where he wants us to go. And so let's be mindful of that. As we move forward and we begin this new chapter as Riles Creek Church. Let's think about what's in our hearts. What's in our hearts? Think about those people who haven't come back to us yet. Are we looking down on them haughty? 
or are we looking at them loving and understandingly? They may have the perception that we're looking at them in a bad way. Let's change that perception. Perception may not be right. Let's change that perception. It's time to start reaching out. It's time to start calling those people and say, hey, we missed you in church. We know, we understand that you don't feel comfortable yet coming back, but we're here for you. We're your church. And when you're ready, we're going to be here with open arms loving you. And I think that's where we are right now in this church that we call our home, God's home, Riles Creek Church. We've made it through this transition. We're on the other side of that hump now. That's time to start moving back up, building this attendance back up, doing God's will, making disciples. Because we are the church. And so that being said, this morning as we close, uh, we do have some musicians here this morning. I don't know if y'all want to play. Or do we have a closing hymn, Miss Kelly? Got no closing hymn? Um, well, with no closing hymn, we'll just say that, look, uh, as we begin this new process, as we begin uh, anew as a church, Riles Creek Church, let's remember to reach out. Reach out to the fold. Let's call them, send them a letter, send them a card. Let them know how much we love them, how much we miss them. You might even want to put in there, hey, look, if y'all want to stay out for the rest of the year, that's fine. Just know that we love you. We're not here judging you. If you're ready to come back, we're going to have open arms for you to be back in the fall. We want you back with us. We love you. And that'll make some people feel a whole lot better. I promise you. So, that being said, uh, thank you for coming to church today. I hope that uh, the message that God has laid on my heart to share with you this morning um, has pricked your heart and has helped you to think about what we all need to do to clean ourselves up, clean our hearts up as we move forward as one church for God. So, that you know, would stand. We'll have our benedictory prayer. And I'm going to ask this morning, Brother Steve, if you would have our benediction.